Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. It is Friday, which means I bring to you some more obscurities in literature. And, well, what better piece of esteemed literature should we talk about today than none other than The Romance of the Three Kingdoms? Uh, a very classic piece of historical literature that has been used as a gold mine for pop culture references across the world at this point for many, many years. Uh, we're starting to see it more often, you know, in the West, but it has absolutely been a source of inspiration for our Eastern friends for a long time. I feel like I've talked about the Son Goku Shitaisen books before. Um, they're just super prevalent games. Uh, we've got like three different art styles on the cover, and that's not actually what I want to talk about today. Um, but it's interesting in that there's just such an absolute prevalence of people making artwork based on the Three Kingdoms. I mean, it's like if you're going to cut your teeth in Japan as an artist of any sort, you're going to be working at some point or another on characters from the Three Kingdoms. It's just, it's a given. That looks like a Raita Kazama. Am I right? I am. So many famous artists have worked on this stuff. Uh, these are just cool books because they have a lot of the background artwork for how they came up with some of this stuff. A lot of famous artists have done some of the larger, more impressive pieces that show up in the actual arcade games. Uh, and if you're not super into the Three Kingdoms stuff, that's okay because Sega also made their samurai-themed one, and you can see the book that I was going to talk about today start to peek through, and it's the exact same thing except all samurai style with just as impressive of artwork. If you've seen any of the Squaresoft Lord of Vermilion books, quite similar to those, uh, of which I own quite a few. If you ever are curious if you want me to show some of those off, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, they are interesting books as well. But, I mean, there's just some really cool stuff. Unfortunately, there's just such a absolute pile of material to work with that, you know, obviously you're not going to be able to get everything fitting on a single page. Until you come across other companies' things. Now, it's not like it's just Sega that was making games based on the Three Kingdoms. Uh, you've got tons and tons and tons of phone apps, phone games, and not just in Japan either. You have them everywhere. But this is a really cool book that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, Hyaka Ryoran Dai Senran. Sangokushi Battle. Okay. So this is like an abundance, well, obviously with flowers, but the main thing is it's like a collection of like beautiful things. And this is a really neat book put out, I want to say, in 2015, because there's some artists I know who are no longer even with us after this book was published, so I know it had to be before that. But just some really cool stuff. It's all Three Kingdoms based, and I have absolutely no idea what this is for. Uh, I want to say it's probably some sort of a video game or a card game, but I don't even know that. And one of the other nice things is that we have an actual breakdown of everybody involved. And if you are really a big fan of this style of artwork, you've got nearly 300 pages of various artists doing this stuff. And right off the bat, we've got some pieces by Amano Yoshitaka, which is always, always nice to see. And I will admit it is kind of interesting to see him drawing this subject matter. It's not his usual. So when I heard that he had done this book, and I don't even remember where I found out about it at this point, but as I'm constantly trying to, you know, research backwards who did what and where, I am absolutely going to be keeping an eye out for other materials by certain artists, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Now, I want to say this is the artist that did Hentai Kamen, which is what gets interesting with this book, is you have a lot of famous manga artists, actually, that are drawing stuff here. Kia Asamiya, creator of Silent Mobius, Dark Angel, did some X-Men work in the late 90s, I believe. I'll be honest, some of this stuff looks super familiar, and I cannot remember what 
the artist. This is a very familiar looking style, Chiba Tetsuya. I should recognize it. I do recognize it, but I can't think of what he was drawing. I think it was a sports manga, maybe. But you have your typical pinup girls, as always with these types of books. And then we get into Dynamic Productions, where certain people look kind of like Koji Kabuto, or Violence Jack, or Devilman, or a mixture of both. I've seen plenty of samurai stuff by uh, Gona Guys production company, but never... Oh, what was the guy's name? Not Ashura Daisho, no. Baron something. Brocken? I can't... Oh my, I, why? I loved Mazinga as a kid, still do, and I can't think of the guy's name. I want to say Brocken, but yeah, as a Chinese officer type. I cannot remember this character. This stuff looks so familiar. I know it. I can't think of it. I'm going to have to show my kids. They'll probably give me a hard time about it. Oh, God. Why can't I not remember this? Like I said, there's some really, really familiar looking stuff in here by some very familiar looking artists. Fukumoto Nobuyuki, the Kaji, right? That's half the fun of this book, is just that I know this style anywhere. That has got to be Kazuichi Hagiwara, the creator of Bastard, where it looks like Dark Schneider has been turned into Guan Yu. It totally is. <laughs> I got an eye for this. That's an interesting one. That is absolutely Hasegawa Yuichi. That is the guy that did a whole bunch of Gundam manga of various sorts and some incredibly raunchy stuff on the side. I mean, really, really, really raunchy. Don't believe me, you can go check. Yep, absolutely. Nope, I'm right. Ba-boom. I only know he did the Vanguard cross among Gundam stuff. That looks really familiar. Was it Salaryman Quinto Rose artist that I was thinking of earlier that did that stuff? It might have been. I want to say he did something in here. This style looks really familiar too. Hiramatsu Shinji. Now here's an interesting one. Especially for those of you who are of a certain age. We've got various characters by Ikigami Ryoichi of Crying Freeman infamy. He's got to be getting up there in the years, too. Good old cow cow. Oh, the pronunciations in those old Dynasty Warrior games. Good times. Like I said, some of these styles of art look really, really familiar. That one does. I'm like, I know Kazuma Raito stuff. I really like this guy's work. And it took me forever. I actually tracked down one of the actual Dojinshi uh, self-published books of his stuff. Again, like I said, everybody draws Three Kingdoms work. Everybody. This guy's got a really cool style. Very wild, very bulky, very bold. But we can save that for another day if you guys really want to see. But like I said, like everybody, everybody draws this stuff. It's like so prevalent. <laughs> Like, anytime you see, like, Sega's name show up at the bottom of any of these copyrighted pages. Uh, well, it, it actually says Three Kingdoms there, but yeah. Not that the back has anything to do with it. These things are just so crazy to track down. I, I love trying to hunt this stuff down, and at least the stuff that isn't just pure smut. <laughs> of which, I hate to say, there is just absolute tons. Absolute 
tons and stuff that doesn't usually always involve just a bunch of scantily clad girls. It's kind of cool. I mean, just like I was saying, the plethora of card games, online games, games needing art assets. A lot of these artists were doing that. And what kind of makes me sad is, you know, with the desire for so many people to move towards AI, some of this stuff almost looks borderline AI generated, but, you know, it's just so similar in style. It, I, I feel like it's kind of a shame. We're, we're losing out on that fun touch. Now, here's an artist I've always enjoyed, Kobayashi Tomomi, the artist that did the Saga Frontier games. Her artwork. Nobody's going to argue that any of these outfits are practical in any way, shape, or form, but they just look cool. Somewhere I thought I read that she had a fashion background. I could be wrong. The colors and everything that she uses. Oh, I love it. I've got a Saga Frontier book from a phone app live service style game that I don't even think was ever translated in the U.S. I'll have to bust that out one day. Lack? I know lack. Here's another artist that looks really familiar. I'm gonna have to go double check Mafune Kazuo. And I'm like barely halfway through the book. I don't even think we've... No, we're, we're barely over page 100. Now this is cool. I can recognize, I don't know the name of the comic, but Motomiya Hiroshi did the Three Kingdoms stuff that I want to say Capcom based their old Dynasty Heroes video game on, for those of you of a certain age again. Just a freaking ton. Whoa, let's go back for a sec. Is that who I think it is? It probably is. Nagano Tsuyoshi, is that the guy that does all of the covers for the various Koei games? It's funny, like, he'll have on one side just super anime girl and then, like, super gritty realistic Shihaudun. Kongming. The Three Brothers and all the other famous players of the Three Kingdoms. Interesting to see how much of this is done digitally, how much is done... There's some traditional... That one took me a moment to realize. Ogi no Makoto, that's the dude who did Peacock King, Kujakuo, which was the basis for one of the early launch Mega Drive Genesis games in the US and Europe, Mystic Defender. He passed away a few years ago, but his work, Peacock King, is absolutely bonkers. I don't know how that stuff got published. It just, it was like, you want to talk about a comic that has everything in the kitchen sink approach to it, and it just revels in it, that would be the book to check out. It's a wild one. This one looks familiar too. Piece of game. Another familiar looking artist. There's one in particular I was going to wrap things up with if I could find where it is. As you can see, I'm just like flipping and skipping here. That looks familiar, but uh, I don't know. I'm not ringing a bell. Come on, where's the one I want to find? There we go. We've even got Takahashi Rumiko doing artwork in this book. Why? Why not, right? I'm not sure who this is supposed to be exactly. My favorite, Takayama Tokushiaki, who has done an absolute ton of work for the Three Kingdom stuff for various companies. Take Hiroyuki, that's the dude that did uh, Shaman King, isn't it? And we're still not done. There's still more to go. It's just an awesome, big, honkin' book. And like I said, <laughs> you want to track any of this stuff down, these Three Kingdom-type books are a great source, especially if you can figure out the 
kanji used in a lot of these artists' names. Uh, I like this book because we do have the English versions of everybody written out. So if you want to actually go hunt any of these artists' works down, it is doable through various outlets. It's definitely a lot easier to read than the big books that Hobby Japan put out for the various Sega games. And it's definitely a lot easier than trying to track down half of these self-published doujin books that don't even have the artists' names at the time, or a way to contact them, or a way to find them, or a way to get a hold of this stuff if you're interested. Um, that's a whole other story for a whole other Friday afternoon and if you guys really want to hear more about that or really see my extensive collection of some of this stuff We can do that another day, but with that said this has been High Lord Tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will hopefully See you back soon. I remembered See you later. Bye. Bye